get it? Because the words comedian and chameleon are kind of like anagram. They're not anagram. Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was me pretending to tell the end of a dumb joke and then explaining why it was dumb. So there too. Um, okay, so today, last time we were looking at um, planetary occultations and uh, b rather satellite occultations, uh, you know, occultations of stars by planetary satellites. And we'd added a bunch of new data uh, to help us compute that from a variety of sources. However, there's a couple of things we missed out on, and I'll make a list here as well. One of them was Pluto, uh, because I because it was in a different format than the others. I should have added it manually, but I never got around to it. Um, <coughs> the second one was I'm dying of the coronavirus, but let's not worry about that. And the there's a couple of others that also didn't make it in that we need to look at, but the really big ones we couldn't include were the asteroids. Uh, the minor planets, the asteroids, the small bodies, whatever you want to call them, because we didn't have any uh, radius information for them. Now, as it turns out, um, let's actually, let's see if I can find a place to, um, let's see if I can, okay, Pomodoro time, but we're always ignore it the first time, so we will ignore that now. And I think I copied this down uh, here. Um, there is a way to query the small uh, small body database and you can actually download it in batch so I went through this um, put in every single field possible and then basically downloaded it in CSV format uh, unfortunately as we will see here unless I've done something stupid which is very likely actually um, we will see here that in bzip2 compressed form it's 311 megabytes in size. Uh, so unfortunately, in the form that it's in right now, I cannot really add it uh, to GitHub. H uh, however, um, yeah, there's a lot of this information is probably not useful uh, for us, and some of it is redundant. Very nicely here, the uh, SPICE ID is, is one of the fields. Uh, and I haven't looked at all these fields yet. Diameter is probably one of the fields that what, that's the field we sort of want for um, for the you know for the uh, body radii fields we were filling in yesterday. Uh, I guess the diameter would be twice the radius if I remember my mathematics correctly. Um, and a lot of other crap that we probably don't need. Um, so let's go ahead and parse this file. Um, and normally, what, what can else can I parse? Small body database. Normally, I would just load the entire file in and use one of the functions I already have to convert this uh, huge file into uh, into something we could parse, uh, basically a, a list of hashes. In this case, however, uh, it's a little bit too big for that. Um, because its full length is a gigabyte, and th that would take a little bit of time to load even on this machine, I think. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, and then this is small body. So it's going to be a little bit uglier because we're basically going to have to replicate the function. Um, Uh, list to not quite that one. Okay. Not list to hash. Um, I think it's to hash list. Yeah, array with headers to hash list. Um, so basically, we have an array where the first line is the headers and the remaining lines are rows under that header. This is not difficult to do. This is, but essentially we can't do that right now because um, this file I think is too big for that. I don't think we can load this in as one big. Uh, it's got like 929, uh, like a million lines in it. Actually, the more I say that, the more I wonder if we could load it in. Um, of course, we are also reading off of a mounted file system here, which also slows things down a little bit.
but I do vaguely remember this is a big file and it has a lot of lines in it. Uh, also, a lot of the fields we're not going to use, so maybe that's going to help us out a little bit. Um, and for those of you who uh, think NASA is a stuffy, or well, it is a stuffy organization, but um, you'll notice that every so often the name of the person who entered it into the database is Automatic. Ha 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 ha. Little pun there from our f friends at NASA. Okay. Um, so let's do this. And then we'll say headers. Actually, I'm going to be a little bit careful here. Um, no, it's got to be headers equals a debug headers. So, again, we start off with something very simple to make sure it's still working, and to make sure it is working, that is. Um, svdb.pl minus minus debug. Okay, fantastic. And so, of course, the headers um, list will just be this split with commas. And there is actually, in case you had commas inside the field names, quoted commas inside the field names, there is another function to do that that's fancier. And I actually copied it up from someone else the Perl at 4.28 uh, FAC, people frequently ask questions, that does allow you to, to parse even if there are quotes inside the comma, in the comma delimited fields. This is not the case here, so this is not an issue for us. Okay, uh, so now, um, okay, so now we should be able to do this. Um, Data equals split on the comma, the thunk. The thunk is dollar sign underscore. And then we should be able to say um, dollar sign headers, dollar sign, oops, dollar sign i goes to dollar sign data, dollar sign i. This just helps us look at the data by field name instead of having to look at it as a big comma separated value file. So let's see what this does. Probably nothing. Oh, shiny. Okay, so spice ID we definitely need. Full name is kind of nice to have. Um, so I think the extent is what we want uh, because I did look it up in the. Well, actually, we can look it up again just so we have it. Um, okay. And there's a clever way to look up extent that doesn't involve going through. Uh, this we can look up, let's say, Cirrus. And if we look up Cirrus, oh, come on, here it is. Uh, you'll see the magic number here is extent. If you click on this, it tells you try axial or by axial body dimensions. And the unit is kilometers. Um, because the extent and the diameter are very similar, you might correctly assume. Uh, that the uh, the radiuses that we want are half halves of these. Um, so let's start making a list of fields we want. Um, and oh, you know what? Actually, I haven't done this quite right, but we'll we'll fix it in a sec. We're not going to get them by number. We're going to get them by name. So um, spike ID, uh, spice ID for sure. We definitely need that. Full name, and you know we could do this in some other ways. Um, I'm going to ask for diameter just because I think we might need it if we can't get a hold of extent. Albedo would be nice to have too if we ever wanted to measure its um, how bright it was. Um, the rest of these terms are actually involved in computing its elliptical orbit. However, since we're using C spice to compute the orbit, we don't need these things here. Uh, and sigmas are the error, the standard deviation of the error in each of these um, uh, each of these um, measurements. Again, we're going to assume they're exact because we kind of have to. Uh, the producer, not of the, of the, not of a movie, but of this uh, data, uh, is David Farnocci. I don't know who he is. He sounds like a nice guy. Um, 
and some more data here wait why are we seeing this twice oh shoot yeah and it might have been that when I added all these fields I got overzealous and um, I added some fields multiple times so we can fix that really quickly by doing this um, so we're gonna create a hash and we're going to say hash of headers of i equals data of i. So now the hash will represent um, the hash will now represent this uh, call it asteroid or minor body or whatever you want. Um, so then we could do we can reuse i here and just to be obnoxious we can use sort keys hash which I guess now that I think about it would be the same as sort data uh, sorry sort headers but whatever uh, and we could say header uh, well, sorry actually um, i goes to hash of i so now we've got this all sort of nicely um, nicely abstracted away into a hash and also we broke something um, Oh, right, we don't need this. This is, should be our end of our there. Let's take a look here. Okay, groovy. And the fact that these are in order now looks kind of weird, but yeah, whatever. Um, so Cirrus, everything shows up just once like it should. Sigma, sigma, sigma. And now more sigma. I guess one thing I could do to avoid that new line, which doesn't really matter at all, but it looks ugly and it makes it look like we've started a new... Uh, asteroid, so I'm just going to put a chomp in there to avoid that. And it still looks kind of weird, but um, anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the other ugliness here, of course, is um, we don't have a delimiter. But I mean, obviously, this is just in testing. We don't really need one, but it's kind of useful to have one anyway. Okay, so what we want is, we said we want the um, spike ID, full name, diameter, and extent. And we might trim that down a little bit, but I think that's actually okay. Um, so we can do this. Um, well, we can do this. Um, we can do nothing. Oh, all right, hang on one second here. And then once we get this going, we will, um, one of the bad things is even though some of these appear in Spice, they don't have names in Spice, but I don't see a way of giving them one because I think the data, um, the name data actually is inside of the kernel itself, not inside of a uh, PCK file or anything like that. And I could be wrong about that, um, but I don't think I am because, well, we can do this. Let's see if the word Ganymede appears anywhere in the, um, anywhere in any sort of TPC file. Um, okay. It does, but something tells me that's in the comment section. Uh, but let's go and look at it. I don't think those are, those names are just... Oh, this is gravity.tpc. Oh, great. I need to probably get to the right one. I think this is the one. Nope. Oh, here it is. This is the one that has everything in it. Um, so this, if we look at this... Wow. All of this is inside of a begin text section. These are all comments. Um, I think. Um... All right, let's try that again. And I'm pretty sure these are not, um, well, okay, because that only lists a few of them. Um, so begin data. And so if we look back here for the last backslash, that's not on the line by itself. That's not, that's not on the line, that's not on the line. Okay, 
So basically the first few thousand lines of this file um, are, are a comment. So there's no place where Ganymede appears as something other than a comment. Um, so wherever it's getting these names, it's actually kind of a good question as to where... Um, let's actually ask that question later on. There is a function in Spice that will tell you um, the name of something or give you know convert names to NAFE IDs or NAFE IDs to names that converts NAFE IDs to names and see what it uses. And we might be able to, to do something with that. Um, so, um, okay, so we're going to go back to our, pr pr our program here. Uh, if we can find it. Okay. Uh, so here we're going to say just the ones we're looking for. And once we have this working, we will actually start to create some, some database files. Uh, that we need to do stuff with. Okay. 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 Um. So. Okay. So interestingly, not all of them want to have an extent file. Um. At an extent value, rather. And I get the feeling most of them will not. Uh, only the bigger ones will have extent values. The rest of them will just have uh, diameters. Okay. So this should not really be that hard. If it does have an extent, uh, we'll, we'll use the extent as its uh, radius. If it doesn't have an extent, um, we'll use uh, its diameter repeated three times. Okay, now I'm sort of curious. Uh, these are some place we, we actually switch over into, into comets from asteroids, which might have um, diameter, full name, goody. Jesus Christ. There's a lot of freaking names here. By the way, one of the, um, I think Randy here is named for James Randy, by the way. Uh, Mr. Spock is named after, let's see if we can find him. Oh, man, okay. Yeah, that's actually named after a cat, which in turn is named after the character on Star Trek. Uh, but the, the names here are, are lo a lot less, um, uh, a Fusic? Really? Uh, they're not as controlled as the names are for planets and stuff, so you get some few silly ones in there now, now and then. Um, and I think it's the person who discovers them that gets to name them. Or, you know, yeah, I think that's the rule, but but in any case. Um, okay, so th a lot of these are things we're not going to... I don't think a lot of these things are even in NAIF. Um... I think it's all NAFE IDs. Nope. Yeah, it's not going to be in there. List of NAFE IDs? I forget what it is. Um, but I think some of these are not even going to be in there. Uh, so, um, so, okay. Okay, so we can do this. if hash extent uh, for right now we're just going to be doing um, this is not correct um, this is dollar sign hash dollar sign x no 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 sorry spike id spike id which is of course the um, radii equal parenthesis this is not going to quite do what we want but it's going to come pretty close Um, else if hash diameter, ooh, I need to divide those numbers by two, don't I? Um, oh, 
but we can just for testing we don't have to do that we can say body radi equal <laughs> hash diameter it's going to be over 2 but like that uh, okay hang on wait 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 that was an elsif oh i forgot to do this also i forgot in pearl elsif is like that else no, hang on i need another one of these else bad line um Okay, and we'll leave this code here, but we're not going to use it. Okay, and I don't think we need this line here anymore either. We do not. Okay, so now what does this tell us? This isn't bad, and this is pretty close to what we want. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. So we do have some cases where there is no spike ID. Um, oh no, there is a spike ID, but there is no, interesting, not that many of them actually. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are back. Give me one second though to make sure the stream is going fine. Um, so this is pretty close to what we want to put in, except I think I forgot to put a space there. Um, not a problem. Plus we're going to have to change that anyway. Um, because that is the diameter. Um, and for the three ones that are three uh, different values, um, yeah, this probably should worry me. <sighs> okay, well, no, we don't have any. C do we have embedded commas here? I don't think we do. But um, uh, let's see. Do we actually? If we do have embedded commas, it could be an issue. Um, but it doesn't look like that's what the issue is here. I think the issue here is simply that we have, um, that we don't have radi. Um, okay. I wonder if 
the Emacs is a CSV mode. But in any case, let's see name, name, don't know. All right. Well, let's see if we can. Um, let's see. So here, instead of just saying bad light, we will also say. Um, okay, um, so we will do a bad line, and then we will also. Um, keys hash. Um, Bug bad line dollar sign i goes to dollar sign hash i. So we will also print out uh, what's wrong here in the bad line. Okay, so now let's see if that helps any. Bad line. Okay, here we go. So this seems fine. This seems fine. Eccentricity seems fine. Last observation sigma. Condition code, full name, sigma i m2. First observation, extent, none. These values seem correct, so it might be that there isn't really isn't a diameter here. Um, no, not, not diameter sigma, we want diameter. Okay, so they don't have a diameter for it. Um, okay, well, is what it is, I guess. Um, so now, without debugging, we can just see what it prints out, which is a lot of stuff like this. Um, And in theory, we could use this data, we could put it right into a, a TPC file, load it, and then we could start making computations for occultations by other asteroids uh, whose radii is not in uh, C Spice. Um, yeah, the only problem here is this is a very, very long list that I think, that I get the feeling is going to be. Um, unnecessarily long because we can put up we could pipe it to word count but it's pretty big these are just the warnings flying by let's see if we can get this mm -hmm. maybe there are too many of these to print out every one of them Okay, so let's not do that. Um, let's just do this. And then I'll put a note here saying that maybe I should be more worried about this. So, quite a, quite a few uh, objects we can get the radiuses of with this. Uh, we probably should add it to our um, program that creates all of these radii instead of making it a separate program. Um, although it does take a freaking while to, uh, well, maybe I don't need to put it to less than, let's see. But yeah, it is going to be quite a few radii, a lot of which we don't need. Um, but a lot of which we do need, so it's kind of 50-50 there. Um, wow. Give it another few seconds here. Okay, well I'm going to go ahead and run it on the other machine because this is a mounted file system which always does slow things uh, down a bit. Um, uh, parse small body. Okay. Excuse me. So it's now running on the other machine. Uh, holy crap. And I know you can't see what I'm doing. And that is okay though. 
And again, these results are not quite ready to use. Uh, they need to be divided by two, and for the extent ones, we need to replace the multiplication signs with spaces. Um, and, and then also divide by two. Okay. Quite, quite a few bodies here. Okay, well, we'll let that run on its own. Okay, so now the the curiosity I had earlier, which I, I forgot that I had that curiosity and remembered it again, is where exactly does Spice get its names when it wants to convert from IDs to names? Um, and let's see if we can find that. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Not interesting. Uh, interesting. No longer interesting. No longer. There we go. Okay. Uh, so the word name should show up in here somewhere. There we go. Body ID to name code translation. Body ID code to string translation. Body name ID code definition. Body name to ID code translation. Okay, that's uh, get array name. Turn name of loaded table. Framed name. Mm, I don't think this is actually. I'll we'll look at it, but I don't think it's what we want. That's a, those are variable names. Okay, name to frame. Um, get module name from traceback. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, a common name for that body. Okay. Okay, so these are, um, okay, okay, so this is interesting, um, there are apparently some that are already built into Spice, um, um, and so let's take a look at the ones that are built into Spice. That seems like it's actually probably pretty important. Uh oh. Um. Okay, lots of crap here. So those are built in. These are built in, yes, up to 550, um, only some of Saturn na Saturns are built in, um, okay, so I guess the question is when they're built in, are they just hard-coded into the, um, into this routine somewhere? Um, Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we can find out real quickly. So we're looking for the um, BOD 2N uh, program, the code. Um, uh, let's see. Somewhere in here there is source code. I think it's in here. Okay. That's not what I was looking for. These are, this is the source code for the stuff that, um, that these are the utility tools, not the actual Spice library itself. So let's quickly, um, so what we're looking for here, I guess, is, take a look here, bodc2n.c. Let me see if I've got it on my, uh, let me, there's a quicker way to search on my other machine. Um, uh, let's see, B, bod C2N. Uh, yeah, it does look like it should be here. Um, interestingly, I don't know if I have it in the uh, Spice 64. Uh, 
sea spice source sea spice okay that's a fun place to go oh oh there's another directory here that actually has the there we go um so bod to n is it bod to n or bod n uh, bod c to n dot why are there two of them i hope those are identical because they really have the exact same meaning they are not identical but they're almost identical oh i think one of them they put like uh, escape delimiters and escapes around to make it easier to print or something. Okay. Da, 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 da. You must link da da da. Da, 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 da. Okay, so this is all just the um just what we just saw earlier. Mm, and the examples we saw earlier. Um Well, okay, so this just calls this. Might as well look at that then. This, uh, bod. Okay, I guess the external, that doesn't necessarily have to be defined in a file called. Um, but let's see what this is. Um, somewhere in here we're going to get some freaking... Um, all right, that wasn't helpful. Now let's see if we can find Ganymede anywhere in here. But I get the feeling this is just a hard-coded lookup table somewhere now. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, hello. Okay, so it looks like this here is the... Um, This here is going to just have, those are comments, those don't count. There it is. This looks like basically every one of them that is, um, okay, so there's nothing really exciting about um, how it gets these names they are just hard-coded into this one function called ID map. Um, okay, well that was kind of disappointing. Um, um, I'm going to make a note of that for myself later. But okay, so that's how we how that's how it converts these names. It has these hard-coded. Uh, so I guess we don't need. Um, we could add to this using the routine they tell, told us about, but the basic fact here is uh, these things are, are hard coded into C Spice, so to add new ones permanently, uh, we'd have to do something else. Probably have to edit this. Well, we could probably add, you know, these code. This is pretty simple BLT COD next number equals this uh, Spice ID, and then we just copy. Plus 29. I think each of these are going to be 36, um, 36, yeah, uh, so we just say 36 and 6, I don't know what this, oh, the 6 might be the integer length, 36 might be the, um, I'm actually, I'm not sure about that last part, let's not, let's not quote me on that part yet, uh, let's see, oh, I guess, yeah, 36 is the, um, how long it takes to store it, I guess, and the actual length of the name is is uh, eight, so so this would not be very hard to add these other things if we wanted to. Uh, this is actually vaguely interesting. Um, for Spice ID one, uh, it really does have two names, which are almost the same name, except um, you know one has a space, one has an underscore. So they even cheat in that sense that they don't really, um, they don't really, uh, they don't really, they basically put it in twice. They don't just, you know, think of the underscore as a space or something. They just literally put it in twice. 
Okay, so that was a fairly disappointing um, outcome there. Um, let's see. Uh, we got. We showed you how to get all the data if you wanted it. Uh, it is too big, unfortunately, to put into uh, into Git. Um, and let's see. And I guess I did. I also need to add um, Pluto manually. Um, but let's go ahead and f let's go ahead and finish uh, the. the uh, the small body database. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, well, let's see. So every time I see an extent, I would expect to see uh, three digits separated by two X's. Um, And potentially some spaces, which aren't going to really matter. Okay. Um, so this, yeah, this is going to be a pretty chunky file. This file itself, though, might be actually small enough to load into, uh, to load into Git, right? because we we've removed a lot of stuff from it. Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we are almost back. We're still almost back. And now we are back. Okay. So now what we want to make sure is that the hash extent is any number of spaces, of course. Any number of digits, any number of spaces. The X, in number of spaces. Digit, in number of spaces. X, any number of spaces. Any number of digits, and then any number of spaces. End. Um, so. So I guess one thing I want to see if there's any bad extents in there. Um, because if there are, we might need to look at the format that they're in. So... Oh, 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 actually we can have points in there, can't we? Um, so when I said this, I meant this with potential dots. We don't need to worry about negative signs because I don't think uh, radii should ever be, diameter should ever be negative, and, and neither should radii. Um, so there's this. Wait. No. There. So it's um, grouping any number of dots. Actually, technically, it's not any number of dots, but you know, whatever. I'm um, still not happy with that, huh? 
Okay. Any number of spaces, any number of uh, digits or dots, any number of spaces, X, any number of spaces, digits and dots, any number of spaces, X, any number of spaces, digits, dots, any number of spaces, end of line. So is there something wrong with the, um, oh, do we have quotation marks in there? We do. Ooh, let's take a look at that. Um, and I probably don't think we need to print out bad line. So let's see what bad extent is coming. I don't think that that many of them are going to have extent. So it's, yeah, I think they're going to have quotation marks. So we could just get rid of the quotation marks directly. But hey, let's in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's see if doing that will, will help. Um, oh. Oh, wow. So those don't have, um, wait, so are the quotes optional? All right. Well, we can, we can do that too. Question mark. Optionally quotes. Although that's kind of bad that they're doing it both ways. Um, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, well, it's still possible some of them are bad, but they're not. At least we've kind of taken care of the, um, the obvious cases. So now, let's just make sure we have this right. We should now be able to get the extents out of these. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Not that many of them have an extent. Um, so here, Let's see. Now, this is again where I'm tempted to um, to actually use dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three. Um, God damn it! And this is just terrible of me. So parentheses followed by dollar sign one over two. Followed that looks really bad. Um, space dollar sign two over two. Space. Dollar sign three over two. Um, end parentheses. And if I remember correctly, we do not need um, we do not need a semicolon because this is we're not really pro these aren't really codes. These are just um, uh, let's see. Did I not actually bother to push the um, output of that program anywhere? Um, uh, maybe I didn't. Okay, so I did have the other program last time that runs and prints out a bunch of stuff, but I may not have put its contents into Git. So let's take a quick look here. Um, nope, this is very wrong. Okay, so... Okay. I'm kind of surprised we didn't do anything with it, but I'm not that surprised because I'm sort of stupid. Um, um, it was BC parse uh, something uh, or parse, um, but yeah. Well, actually, let's just look at this. Um, moons hack. Oh, yeah, there it is. BC Moons hack TPC. But I think that is a... Oh, yeah. That's right. That wasn't that big because um, that just did moons. And it actually is missing out... Um, wait. Where is... Okay, there they are. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's missing Pluto. But that's not a huge deal. Okay, so we have this... And that should be fine. Let's 
let's see what that does. As always, we we like to just uh, print things first. That's looking pretty good, actually. Um, in fact, that's looking really good. Um, that's looking almost too good because I, oh right because I actually I no longer have any warnings and I just have a debug statement okay so now the only thing we need to change here is um, so that's fine um, so the radar for half the diameters um, so, divide diameter by 2 for radius radii. Diameters by 2 for ra uh, diameter. Actually, it's a single diameter, we divide it by 2. Uh, my rad equals hash diameter over 2, and this just becomes rad, 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 man. It is so rad. Uh, this. Um, so let's take a look at this. This is, this is it. And this is actually, uh, what we need. And it's pretty damn big. Let me go ahead and run it on the other machine. And, um, cause it, it's not mounted, you know. This is a mounted file system, which is slower. Um, but let's see, what is it called again? PC parse SSDB. PC parse SS. Uh, small body database, rather. And let's see how big this is. We'll call this BC hack. Um, what do we call the other one? BC Moon's hack, this will be, of course, BC uh, Asteroids hack. TPC. And the moment of truth is whether or not it'll be too big for Git. If it's not, I'm going to go ahead and push it. Um, it's taking a while to run, which is never good. And I'm on another machine, you can't see what I'm doing. Well, we're up to 3.5 megabytes. 3.8 megabytes. Um, 4. Point, I guess I can do the LS minus L here, even though it's running on another machine. Okay, is that it? It's all done? Nope, not all done. So we're kind of... It's vaguely interesting. Maybe it's not getting updated here? I don't know. It's 5.24 megabytes on the other side. It might just be that because it's a mounted file system, it takes it. There it is. Uh, let's take a look at it as it keeps growing. Jesus. Some of these are actually not asteroids, these are comets, but we're going to pretend. Yeah. I guess because we're mounting a file system, we're not getting as good results as we could otherwise. Uh, but it's up to 5.5 megs now. Uh, 5.6. I don't know what the limit is for GitHub. Um, I think it's pretty big, like... Um, like uh, 50 megabytes or something, so we should be well within the the range here. But um, oh, hang on, here we go. And we are done. And the final size was that I don't think is accurate. Oh, it is five six three eight eight zero seven. 
let me see if I can push this to Git without having Git complain at me. Um. And let's see. So far, not a problem. Um, looking okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's a problem. Okay, so the next thing we do is we, of course, um, we load this into the max kernel that we had before. And the only real possible problem here is going to be that there's something wrong with it and it won't load correctly. Um, hopefully, hopefully, um, I'm going to try running the um, the moon occultation program again on the other machine. I guess I could do it over here since it's just the one, uh, just the one off. So hang on. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Well, the run me is going to be the one for. Um, this is going to be for all of the ones we don't already have. So this is the question is is results of this thing yeah so this is the one it couldn't find earlier so in theory if I run this now um, it should run now because it now has the radius information that it needs realistically of course yeah the variable is now found in the kernel pool 2000568 radii so, um, no, oh, actually, hang on. Okay, so it looks like it is in there, which means something else has gone wrong. Um, let me make sure that the max kernel is going at home. BC Gids, this is this is it. <laughs> that's where it is. I'll double check, but yep, that's where it is. Um, okay. Now, in theory, we could do the old binary search and peck and hunt and find or whatever. Um, and I guess we will. So let's see if it works for the very first. Um, oh shit, because that, that's, ah, uh, shit, shit, shit. That's actually already going to be in uh, somewhere else in the TPC kernel. And the, um, so actually this is, does not work. We actually have to load up the list of known radii and not put them in here because they, they will conflict with the existing known radii. Although I'm vaguely interested in seeing um, what this looks like in the actual. So we'll look at it in our own uh, hack ast asteroid hack function and then also in the um, uh, PCK. Interesting. It's about the same, which suggests that my division by two was not was not wrong. Um, but at the same time, I should not be overwriting that. So, 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 so we can we can fix that. Um, oh, and there's another problem with this here, which is I'm pretty sure I need to have a begin data, um, like like I do for for the, um, like they do here, because otherwise it assumes everything is a comment. Um, yep. Okay. So a couple of things I need to do to fix this program. Um, And I'll, we might want at some point the albedo in case we decide to start computing magnitudes, which we're not doing right now. And let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, that. 
And the other thing is from our other program, um, parse moons, parse looter data. What the hell did I parse? All right, whatever I did last time to get the um, the radiuses of the moons, uh, it had a function in there to make sure that we didn't accidentally overwrite anything that. Um, so asteroids hack, moons hack. It was this, and actually I could have added what I just did today to this, but whatever. Um, let's see. Has radi. So let's see where I define has radi. Okay. Oh no, that's just skipping over that. Um. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I probably should make this a subroutine inside of this. Um, okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're back. Okay, so let me see what I did here. Okay. Okay, so I guess over here I did um, ID to name and then name to radius, uh, which is a little bit different because it's indirect. So I'm going to feel bad about this, but I think I'm just going to copy over the has radi function to over here. Uh, this function should not be in two places. Um, extract if IDs copied from BC extract if IDs.pl sub existing spice radi. Okay. And let's see. So after we've converted to a hash, if has radi hash spike ID, um, then we are just going to ignore it. So if we already have a uh, if um, 
if Spice already knows about it, we're not going to try to overwrite that. Okay, so now, if this works, let's find out. Let's see if I know what the hell I'm doing here. I probably do not. Um, but let's see if... Uh, not there. Oh, cool. Um, okay. So I'm running on, uh, on another machine. You can't see what I'm doing, which is fine. Um, yeah. This would actually work better if I actually called the subroutine first. Um, let's see. And again, we can call it right, right at the beginning here. Existing spice red eye. Oh, I guess we can just do this. Um, wait, what do I do it in the other one? Do I actually use the ampersand no tip, no, no, no notation? Oh, I do. I use both. Why? Okay, I I think that's redundant. I think I only need to use either the um, ampersand or I can just call the function name with no arguments. Um, so presumably that's that's good. All right, one more time. Uh, okay, that's looking a little bit better here, but. Um, According to this, body 2002 isn't in the, uh, the... The sad thing is I almost believe that's actually true. The very second asteroid isn't in... Um, um, selected. So, body da da, these are da da, these are Saturn moons. Neptune, uh, sorry. Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Wow, yeah. Cirrus, Vesta. So there's very few of them that actually have it. So that's actually correct. Most of them are going to be new. So let me go ahead and do this now. Let me go ahead and um, asteroid hack. And so I guess that's not going to eliminate a lot from this... Um, from this list, but at least it won't overwrite anything we already have data for. Um, and this time with the begin data, it's actually possible that that this will do something useful. Um, I wouldn't count on it, but you know. Um, and since it is, since Git does use sort of a diffing mechanism, in theory, um, this shouldn't be too bad when I push it back. It's actually a very small change from the original file. Okay. Uh, yep, it's going to take a little bit more time here. And after it does, we can we can push it nicely into um, into Git, and then we can actually run it to see if it can do what we want it to do. The whole reason we built it is so that we could check for um, eclipses by these asteroids of stars. The, I'm sure someone else has already done this. I get the feeling that uh, there's just no way that, even though these, these radii are not in spice, someone hasn't already sort of looked at this and said, yeah, there, there's, there's other ways to do this, and I, and I get the feeling that people have already done this in other ways. So we're st still waiting for it to um, finish running. I will provide some nice lovely banter here. Um, gee, I hope that everyone dies of coronavirus, uh, because that would be nice. It would be very humane. Because, uh, you know, you don't want to be like the last person left alive on Earth after coronavirus has killed everyone. Because you'll be sad. You'll be bitter. I mean, unless it's like you and some really hot chick, or if you are the hot chick, well, that'll be pretty sad for you, because let's face it, if you're a hot chick, guys are not going to be worth it. Uh, the guys who were left over after coronavirus, uh, probably very good immunity systems, but probably not great in other... Okay, it's all done now.
It's getting tired of talking, which is surprising for me. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do this... Um, um, this. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. The kernel pool does not have room for any more variables. That, I think that deserves a round of applause. We broke sea spice in a way that wasn't expected. Let me see if there is a way to allocate more room for kernel variables. If there isn't, um... Well, we're screwed then. Well, we'll figure something out, but... Um... Okay... Alright, let's see if there's a function in CSpice that lets us make the kernel bigger. Find values from the kernel pool, return values, do other shit with values, see kernel get pointing. What? The hell? Oh, that's not what I wanted, but okay. Uh, kernel, 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 kernel. Clear the pool of kernel variables data for a kernel pool of variable, delete a variable, confirm the existence of a variable, furnish a program with kernels, get integers from the kernel pool, make kernel pool bigger. Um, okay. Reader, reader, this is all just freaking. Um, here we go. Get size limitations of the kernel pool, followed by get around size limitations of the kernel pool. Um,. is not and yeah well you know what I don't need to use it I need to override this um, that is that is not what I need I need to make bigger piece of crap all right so pool well the word pool appears here a lot of times too bad kernel pool variable Clear the pool, uh -huh. check variable, data for, okay, yeah. Okay, so that's not cool at all. Um, Load variables from a kernel file into the pool. Load variables from memory into the pool. Uh, okay, put character strings, put double precision numbers, integers. Make freaking pool bigger. It's really cool that you can do these things. Um, nope. Apparently there is no way to make the kernel pool bigger. So now we have failed at a very different level here of creating too many... Um, too many variables. And I guess the only thing we could look for now is to see only print out the values for the ones that are in spice but don't have radiuses in spice. Um, which is which is fun. Let's see if we can do that. Um, let's see. Uh, da 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 da. Uh, existing spice radii. Oh wow, so I guess, um, so 
so I guess whatever I use to get the um, um, IDs from brief comments in HTML, um, these are all the IDs known to the kernels that I'm aware of. So, eh, I think that actually might be, okay. Uh, yeah, so we'd actually do basically do this uh, SPATH brief. Uh, okay, so this is brief IDs. Uh-huh. Okay. So basically this is all of the things that we have um, we have NAIF IDs for, with or without a name. All right, let's see if we can do that a little bit more directly here. Uh, brief. Um, minus T. I think we can do this. This should give us... Okay, okay. Um, all right. So, the very first line, um, minus the potentially the star, uh, and obviously we have to clean this up a little bit, are going to be the IDs known to NAIF. Um, again, very, very ugly here. So even when it doesn't have names, it does have the NAIF IDs. So the number of NAIF IDs known is very small. And, um, all right. Mm. Okay. Sort minus NU. Let's see if that works. Okay, there is a blank line there, but that's probably okay. Uh, and yeah, there aren't that many known. Oh, actually, hang on. And dollar sign F zero equals substitute star into nothingness. Um, and I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of a header on this uh, very carefully. Um, First, let me make sure I don't already have something like this. I mean, I have nafids.html, but that's not... Um, called this BC naif IDs known to spice. And then I will edit this file. Um, And then I will actually copy what I did here, so we have it. And do I want to be a little bit nicer here and allow this to be multiple lines? Probably not. Okay. And then BC. That's not the one I want, though. Um, excuse me. And that's a much smaller number there. And let's see what we can do here. If I use no spice, and we were just working on uh, parse SD. Okay, so that's what we need. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and push this to git because we're about to change it in a really bad way. Okay. Okay. Um. And I guess what I could do here is I could actually put a description of it. Gives radi for objects known to spice but that do not have radii in spice 
Um, trying to give uh, radii for all objects in small body dd.csv.bs2, bz2 rather, uh, yields to kernel out of memory error, which explains why we're not doing that. Okay. Um, load list of known um, uh, list, load list of naif, <laughs> naif IDs known to spice. Um, uh, no, 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 home user bc get astro and the file that we just uh, created. FIDs known to spice. Okay, Pomodoro back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we are almost back again. And we're back. Okay. So we got a split on the new line here. Uh, read file this. Oh, wait, hang on. Da, da. As always, we're going to be a little bit paranoid here. And I think that's kind of weird. That is, am I off by a parenthesis here? Read file, end, oh yeah. Okay, now, and we'll just test here real quickly. Um, Okay, great. And the only thing we need to do, of course, is get rid of the comment lines. Not that it's going to really matter, but... Okay.
Okay, so now this should just be a list of the uh, IDs here. Um, cool, or I made a, made a syntax error. And I think... Wait. Oh, shit, this, isn't, this should be an M. And this should be an M. If this line matches either of those, we ignore it. Still not right. Okay. If dollar sign i equal m uh, beginning space n, or or dollar sign this is an equal tilde n, this. So now, awesome. So now we could just say um, dollar sign in space dollar sign equals one. I think by splitting on the new line, it there's an implicit chomp there, uh, so I don't have to get rid of the tailing new line. Okay, so we get the radii. So now we have a pretty silly looking thing here. Uh, um, I could put this into one statement. I'm not going to. Unless in spice hash spec ID uh, next. These could of course be combined. So this says if it has a radius in spice, we don't use it. But if it's not in spice at all, we don't use it either. Uh, so we're really just trying to fill in what's in spice but doesn't have a radius in spice. Pretty dull, actually. But let me do it. Let me see what happens. Let me um, quickly run it without... Um, yeah, it looks like it's working. It's skipping quite a bit of stuff. Okay. Uh, and this time it's going to be really tiny, too, so we're, we're in kind of good shape. Not super great shape, mind you. Um, it still has to go through a very large file in order to, to create this, but uh, the end result will be quite a bit smaller. Okay. Excuse me. It's taken a while to get there. Still going. Um, I I could go on and do something else here, but um, I'm not going to. But maybe let's look briefly at README Stream and see if there's anything interesting. I actually kind of know what I want to do next here. Um, oh, I also need to add Pluto. I keep forgetting about that one. Um, and that one, I think. Um, now, let's see. Moon... Is there... Have I not loaded that? Uh, BC... Moon... Hacks. Moon's hack. Okay, so now... We have to do this for Pluto's satellites. Um, oh crap. Actually... Which one of Pluto's satellites are already in there? We don't want to overwrite them. Uh, so it's going to be body 9 something. Um, this. And then I'm just going to do a grep radii. Okay, so 901 is already in there. That's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's uh, Charon. So it's going to be 902 and up. Body 902 radii equals blah. And I think... Uh, aside from Charon, we have four moons numbered two through five. Okay, and then I should be able to bring up in Firefox, uh, Spice Meta, Pluto moons. Yay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Charon we already have, and the rest of them. So this is, oh come on, <laughs> really? You're not going to give them to me in order. So. <coughs> um, 
the NAIF ID of Nix. And I think it's 902 because of this. Um, let's take a quick look though. NAIF ID of Nix. Should be 902. Oh yeah, there we are. So Nix is 902, Nix, Hydra, Krebros, and Styx. Nix, Hydra, okay good, so they do match, the, the P matches the 900 plus. So this one's just going to be this, obviously we'll need to change it uh, to just spaces. And these are radiuses, right? Mean to, god damn it! Seriously? That's insane. Why 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 do you give these values inconsistently, NASA? Because you guys suck, that's why. Yes, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the math in my head. Uh twenty four, sixteen point five, and um uh, fifteen. Okay. I'm okay with that. Nine oh three is Hydra, which we need to divide this by two. Uh, okay, or that was kinda bad though. So we're just not even at 25, 18, 16, close, screw that. Okay, Krebros, Kerebros, I don't know how to pronounce that. Thing I cannot pronounce. 9.5, 4.5, and least, and also probably last, Styx. Uh, of course, named after the river Styx, but that's not surprising because we have Pluto and stuff going on. 8, 4.5, 4.5, and four. Okay, so that's Pluto done for. And then, okay, fantastic. It looks like BC Asteroids Hack is also ready to go. And in this case, it's not going to be big at all. Um, so 297 lines. Very, very tolerable. Let me go ahead and push this to Git. Um, Okay, and so now we go back to the thing we were trying to try before, which was BC, Moon, Occult Star, this thing. <whistles> and I guess we're going to do, that was pretty damn quick actually. Um, so does this asteroid ever get close enough to a star to be, a bright star to be interesting? Dun 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 dun! And I guess actually this is going to be a huge output, so I probably shouldn't have tried to sort it in place, but it does look like it's at least uh, running, uh, which is good. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just let this run. Um, not here, I'll let it run somewhere else. Um, so let me go set that up real quick, because I really have it set up to a pretty, oh, actually, you know what, I can do this right here. I can do part of this right here. Uh, so we go over here, uh, 2020-0312, and again, I really should, be, yeah, there it is. Uh, so what I have here is, grand, by the way, is all of them put together, and I need to look at that at some point. Um, so this is what I have here. Uh, previously, this is what happened, and I ran these. Now I do have something called, what this does is it looks for ones that exist, that, you know, it looks for all the stuff that, um, body list in, what? Did I F that up? Oh wow, so I already had something like that. Uh, so I think I might have just done something redundant. And... Um, NAIF ID is known to spice. Yep. Nice. I really effed that up. So I already had that list, but whatever. Um, okay. 
But so what this does... is it figures out which ones don't already have results files. Now, of course, right now, everything's going to have a result file because some of them have stupid results files that say we don't have the radius for this, like this. Uh, so the first thing to do is we're going to get rid of all the files that are of size 740 bytes, which th they call characters in find. Uh, and just to make sure this is correct, we're going to do XRs. So all of those, and then we'll just remove them. And then we'll do this, and then 736 bytes is the other one. Um, get rid of all those, and then, um, and then we can actually do ls um, minus l sort minus. I think it's one, two, three, four, k four and r to see the biggest files are or smallest files rather, um, and the smallest result file is a pretty decent size. So I actually could have done look at all the results files and show me the ones that are smallest and the ooh. Yes, because the earth, by the way, cannot occult itself. Uh, just in case you didn't know that. 399 is the earth. Okay, so now if I run this um, one-liners program, uh, it should tell me the ones that are still missing. The 307 that are still missing. And I'm going to call this run me we already have a uh, you know this will be the one we want to run now to pick up all the stragglers. And I'm not going to run that here, um, but I am going to run that um, on my other machine. Um, if, if, assuming I can get to where I need to be. Assuming I know what the hell I'm doing, which I never do. Okay. There it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this on the other machine where you can't see it, uh, but uh, we're going to start getting some, some hopefully getting some results, um, or we won't. Okay, stand, hang on, stand by, stand by. Uh, we got some more problems going on here. Oh wow! So it looks like. Um, Body 557? Oh, yes, there's still some missing ones here uh, because some of Jupiter's moons got renamed, and we do need to, we need to fix that. Um, but we're getting... Um, also, by the way, some of these are Lagrange points. Uh, they, they, they literally don't have radii because they, they, they're, uh, they're just manifestations of points. They're not actually physical bodies. Uh, but it does look like we're getting some decent results now for... Uh, 902, which is Pluto's other moon, and then the real test will be uh, once we get to um, the asteroids, the 2000s. But that's going to take a while. That's take like a day to run or so. So now I'm going to hesitantly move on to something else I've wanted to do uh, and, and could be very useful and could suck. I don't know. Now, everyone knows about Jekyll and all this, you know, ooh, people, instead of having the server do the work, you can do the work on your own machine and then push just HTML files somewhere, and everyone th thinks that's exciting and new. It's not exciting and new. It's how we pretty much had to do things back in the day uh, before we had server-side, uh, you know, parsing. Uh, so we would create the files locally, push them over as HTML, and then we relied really on the web server just serving the pages and the browser just knowing HTML. And in our case, maybe JavaScript, but, but really just HTML. So the, um, so, you know, so this page I'm running here, courtesy of referata.com, who are wonderful people, and, or person actually, I know the guy, um, and they probably will give you a free referata.com if you ask them, but don't mention my name. Um, so this is something about running for Pearls, um, Pearls Before Swine, which is a, uh, uh, comic strip by Stephen Pastis. Uh, it's actually pretty good. I mean, it's oh, it's okay. For example, you have here a um, nothing. Now here you should have a character list. And um, if it comes up, which it's actually pretty good about coming up most of the time. It's being a little bit slow right now. Um... Okay, well, that's just going to take forever. 
I feel bad saying that because it really is a wonderful uh, service. And I am very thankful to... Um, okay. There we go. And the sort of the cool thing is this is, of course, the list of all... Um, list, not of all, really, because I stopped doing it at a certain point, but a list of a lot of the characters that appear in Pearls Before Swine. You can even sort by the number of times they've appeared, the first appearance, um, the name, and even the species, although I, I use the word species a little bit, uh, a little bit oddly here. But th this is, you know, just something I... Um, uh, just let's take a look at a random page. I'm kind of curious where it takes us. Um, uh, Pomodoro time back in two and two. This is a this is an issue. I'll be right back and explain it. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, that was a bad example of a random page. Hopefully this one will be better. Yeah, so this is a, a strip from uh, December 24th, 2006. We have a... Uh, small thumbnail here. If we uh, click on it, we go to the Go Comics page for it. Um, <laughs> he, he, he does have his moments. And there is a link to the highest resolution that they keep on Go Comics. Again, this is not my site. This is Universal's. Um, And, okay, so amusing. So the way I create this right now is actually a little unusual. And I call it a meta wiki. And I think, yeah, it's actually all created, and these are just guidelines. It's all created from one big file. Um, and all of this, by the way, is there are comments on the file. These aren't actually part of the file that creates it. Uh, Jesus Christ. And here we have the data. So basically, the idea here is this says on the strip that is dated January 30th, 2002, uh, all this tells me is that the, it has characters in it, rat, pig, and human. Um, this strip here has lions and crocodiles. Lions notes, these are unnamed remote lions, not to be confused with Max and Zack lion, uh, who show up later in the series. These are remote Crocodiles, not to be conferred with Zeta, Zeta, Epsilon, or Larry, both who live next door to Zebra. And then there's more complicated data in here. The general idea, though, is you can have um, you can have nested data in here. 
So what this says is that Zebra has a cousin named Lou. This number is just given to him because I don't have another way of identifying him. And so that's this. But inside of that it says, uh, so this is that um, he dies in the strip. And it also says that he's a character in the strip. Uh, so we can get quite a bit of data in here. Um, and, the, and the idea is how do we convert this into multiple uh, pages? So I've already got it working so it, com uh, it, uh, it, um, it creates multiple pages using the, uh, the meta wiki format, the semantic meta wiki format. And I've got a program that does that. But now I'd like to get it so that it puts all this stuff into raw HTML so we don't even have to, um, and so we can use GitHub pages or anything that holds flat HTML. I might want to put a little bit of JavaScript in it from the client side, but really it should be able to work without that. Um, and so we so WordPress is out. Jekyll might actually be the thing to do, um, but we probably don't need Jekyll because we're, we're going to be creating our own sort of server side, uh, client side thing. Well my server side thing not the you know not another remote server uh, side thing um, and so that's that's the general idea um, so so the question is can we create now keep in mind these are pretty sophisticated looking pages there's a lot of stuff going on here um, you know what links here related changes special pages we might have to get rid of uh, page information values properties this is a semantic specialty by the way this is does not appear in regular Wikipedia I, I Wikimedia wiki whatever the hell it is I'm using um, media wiki it only appears in semantic media wiki um, so we have yes uh, so we have so this is the kind of cool stuff that's actually Larry has date, meaning he's a character in this date. Um, creation date, that's probably not important. Uh, strips, it, it is a strip that's being linked here. And um, so if we go to Larry as a character, he has a, he has a character template sheet. And a lot of this is done through, um, through templates and stuff. Um, so this is Larry the character. And now we just learned about him. He has 495 appearances. That's what he's worked as. It's his aliases. Uh, and these are a list of all of his appearances. Um, but to preserve the, uh, you know, not list 200, 495 pages here, it is paginated. And again, this is a very nice thing that uh, Semantic Media Wiki does that I will have to remember to do as well. And if you do the pagination, then it actually has to go to this sort of a weird URL to find the next, I think it's 20 at a time that we're going to get out of this. Um, it's usually not this slow, by the way. I think it might just be a combination of what I'm doing here on my machine. Um, so here's the next 20 of them. And then you can go from here to the next 20 if you want, or 50 or 100 or 250 or 500. Uh, so there's quite a bit of stuff here that's going to be difficult to replicate in HTML, I think, um, but I could be wrong. Um, and you know, sir, the other option is, I mean, I love this guy for, for hosting this. It, I could put my semantic media wiki somewhere else, like on one of my own servers, so I'm not, um, I'm not sucking up this guy's bandwidth. There's also a few errors that need to be fixed in this, uh, in this uh, program. Uh, for example, well, I don't know if we're going to get there, but um, if you try to go to a proper name, I, my goal is to link you to Wikipedia. Um, although we might want to actually keep track of, you know, uh, we have, might want to have a redirect page or something. Uh, but but again, that's that's um, that's a, a to add feature. So what we what we do here is, first of all, we're going to read me because I actually forget um, how the hell I do all of this. Uh, da -da -da, da -da -da. Okay, so let me check what the mirror referata alias does because I don't remember anymore. Oh wow, um, mirror mw attributes. 
Um, so apparently I used the AP. Let's see what that hell that does. So that's a good thing to know. Uh, also, where, where where that exists, that would be also a very nice thing to do. Mirror MW. Why does that say Mirror MW? I guess we don't use the other one. We just do this. Attributes. Okay. Okay, and it, it does. So this basically uses the API, apparently, to only change the files that have changed since the last time. Um, and it uses the, the chatter minus v, the version number, which is strange because really you want to use the m time, but you don't want to use the m time because that could change if someone accidentally touches the file as opposed to actually having a, a change in it. I guess the hash would be another way of doing that as well. Okay. But the the obvious is you can guess the main crux of what happens here is this program. Um after fix there's okay da da da. Um run queries, okay. Remove oh these are this is an SQLite three database that's local. Um Jeez. Um, create the schema. Uh, da da da. Create pages. Okay. So. Okay. And there are not that many MW files in this subdirectory. Uh, these are basically the template files. I hope these are the template files. Excuse me. Um, so these are basically just the ones that are um, templates on how to display something. And hopefully I know what the hell I'm talking about here. Oh my god. At one point I knew what that meant. So when I list a strip, for example, that looks really bad, but this is actually... Um, character list, but it prints as characters, but it links to character list. Um, holy fuck. Okay, wow. This is nasty. So this basically prints all of the... Um, this basically prints the table under any given strip that says uh, a list of characters birthdays that occur in this strip, if any, deaths, cameos, newspaper mentions, because it turns out uh, Stephen Pastis is really uh, interested. He mentions newspapers secretly in his, uh, in his comics a lot. So events, meta notes, if there are notes, create a section called notes, and then create a section called description. Um, and then this is just the, uh, apparently this is just the uh, last time that something was modified. <sighs> this is, I can't believe I made this at some point. I mean, I might have had help, I guess, but... Um, so now I'm actually concerned a little bit. Um, okay. So if something's in the storylines category, that wasn't very exciting. Um, damn. And Wikilink is, a, is one that's not working, by the way. The idea here is I can link to Wikipedia. Um, and this is actually not a great... It doesn't work for one. It creates, for some reason, um, Base64 or... Uh, yeah, Base64 encoded text for some bizarre reason. Um... I think I might be able to show you. Um, I'm hoping here to find Arnold Schwarzenegger. And if I don't, I'll be back. <laughs> I'm so funny. Um, but unfortunately, you're going to see that the link to Arnold Schwarzenegger is broken. 
Um, assuming that this comes up at all. Um, shit. There should have been something in the search, though. Um, anyway. Okay. Now again, like I said, this guy is great. He does he does everything. Um, he's wonderful. He's marvelous. Um, and apparently, uh, da da da. This is the README page for that. That's the directory. So, now the, the fundamental basis of a semantic wiki or of basically any sort of semantic notation is the triple known as the RDF or, or the triple, which says what is being related to, like if we said, you know, pig, what the relation is like father, and then what is the target of that relation? Uh, there's a little bit more to it because you can have like, you know, more complicated objects. But um, so this actually might be an example of where uh, we see a mistake in how something is being printed. Um, and so the theoretical idea here is um, So we'll just pick a storyline here. And the, again, the thing that's kind of difficult to get is uh, like maybe nested uh, data here. I think, you know, uh, let's see. Oh, character is Abraham Lincoln. Okay. This should, this should break somehow right now. Um, I guess maybe I didn't want to link Abraham Lincoln. I mean, ideally, I don't want to link Abraham Lincoln directly to the Wikipedia page. There should be a landing page that says, um, this is the real world uh, entity, Abraham Lincoln, appearing in this, uh, in this wiki. Uh, here's the Wikipedia link. Um, appearances, okay, well. I guess that didn't do what I wanted it to do. And that's the other po possibility is that you have someone who shows up multiple times, so you need to capture him as a character. Now, oh, actually it's just pbs.txt. So I think I can find, if I, if I say any place where I say Wikipedia, um, Chirac, uh, who is the was the president of France. I don't think he is anymore, actually. So we'll, we we'll see an example here. Um, so I mean, these are all HTML pages. There's, I mean, there's nothing sort of wrong with that. Um, Rat writes to Chirac. Um, And somewhere there should be a link to who, um, who Chirac is. And the link will be broken. It's going to look like, it's going to look like, okay. There's only two strips in this? Okay. I guess I should see where that Wikipedia link is coming in. Um, oh, both days. Okay. Um, so it might have gotten fixed, actually. Um, oh wow, so maybe it got fixed, at one point that was kind of broken, okay, um, now of course there's even more options here, in theory I could run the semantic media wiki locally and then just you know, create HTML from it and send those pages over. There's also the possibility that if I want to make the uh, wiki 
I don't want to make it editable, but there's also a possibility that even if I don't need to make it editable, there has to be some, you know, real-time stuff going on. Um, oh, wow. Okay, I guess that one made it through. Um, yeah, okay. So... By the way, did you know that GNU, GNU, which is different from GNU, which is a thing that produces software, is another name for wildebeest. They are actually the same thing. Um, I mean, I guess I could try to, you know, parse this, um, this template for myself. And I guess the other thing is, uh, it's Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're still almost back. Okay. Oh shit, I've been going for two hours. So I'll go for another few minutes and then we'll, we'll, call, we'll call it. Excuse me. Um, okay. So really what we're doing is we're creating a bunch of uh, semantic triples. And I get the feeling, I think that's, in some sense, this is all that this actually does. Um, and, oh, <laughs> annotation files for Faye. Oh, right, if everyone look at these through the, the web browser Faye, <coughs> Um, I can see what comments I already have, uh, so I, I can, it also lets me add comments, uh, to make it easier to get all this stuff out of here. Okay. Jesus Christ. Um. Um. Okay, so I, uh, wow. So really, it all comes down to um, it all comes down to uh, semantic triples. Ultimately, uh, let's see if I run this. Where does the output go? User local Etsy, MetaWiki PBS three, and let me check to see. I guess I'm getting the feeling that doesn't exist on my current machine because I haven't run this in ages, uh, and I'm wrong. It does exist. Um, <coughs> sorry, coronavirus still killing me, huh, but anyway, um, boy, 
Oh boy. I'm tempted to run this on my other machine just to see what happens. And being the wonderfully dangerous person that I am, I will. Okay, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um, wow. <sighs> wow. I know you can't see what I'm doing, and it's even more frustrating because I'm pretending like it's interesting. Um, hmm. Didn't do what I expected it to do. Um, so it's not working right now, which is probably good news. Um, oh, apparently I need to create another directory here. Um, for this to work correctly. Um, and don't worry, I'll get either get back to you guys or I will, I will end the stream or something that is probably equally useful. Okay, so right now it's not working at all, which is probably a good, um, which is probably, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, honestly. Um, let me run it here and see if it actually creates a database like it's supposed to. Okay, that's fine. You can't remove something that doesn't exist. That's okay. Um, yeah, and this stuff doesn't exist on this machine, so that's not surprising. Um, yeah, so a lot of this stuff isn't going to actually happen. That's fine, though. Um, the important thing is I'm curious to see if it actually created... Uh, it did create PBS3. Um, so now I can let's go into it and take a look at it real uh, SQLite 3 of course is what I mean um, let's take a look at the schema select stars from C I don't know why relatives needs to be a separate oh I do actually uh, this is not a list of relatives I don't think this is basically what is considered a relative. Um, and then AKA, I, that's kind of, I don't know why that's in there either, actually, to be honest. Um, I don't know why that's there. I also don't know why it shows up multiple times. But as you can see, the main, main thing, well, care count. Again. Uh Again, I don't see... I guess it's because it's derived, but still. Uh, but the main one, of course, is is triples. Uh, which is where we're going to... Um, and, yeah, this is, this is basically saying guard duck has gender male, and that's determined on 000, which means undefined date. Um, meta... Oh, and this just tells me the date 000 is a meta date. Uh, Joy has gen anime has gender female. Let me um this is not real randomness by the way. This is fake randomness. What? Mm, pretty sure this should work. So let's start from triples. Oh yeah. Today on learning how to use SQL correctly. Yeah, so it's random, I think. Yeah, there we go. This is not really random ordered because that's just the way the sort function doesn't work. But this gives us sort of a better idea that... Um, and there is kind of a glitch here because we are using the strip's date as sort of a... Um, as sort of, a, sort of an extra process, sort of an extra number in the triple um, that that isn't um, the hell character Andy dog Prev whoa 
Okay, this, now I'm actually confused. Book. Pearls falls fast. Let's do that again. Um. Potus elephant. So why is this? Oh, I guess this is the last one is the source. So so this is just saying, uh, this is part of the storyline. Pig plays with Viking figures. The source is this. The only time that's kind of weird is when the source is something that is not equal to, uh, is not equal to a date. It's equal to something else. But we can actually look at this. Um, yeah, source relation, target data source. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, so largely, that is what we're looking at now. The idea here is. Can we convert it? Basically, all of these triples also go in both directions. Um, um, I think. I think, I think, I think. But I really haven't looked at this in ages. Uh, in fact, as I pointed out, I probably could not recreate this now if something happened to it. Um, okay. So, also, so, so the question, the two questions are, number one, a lot of this stuff I don't necessarily need to, um, include in my, in my, uh, read-only wiki, because, uh, this would be stuff that people would want to, to look at. The view source here should be very, very simple. It should be, um... It should just be like a, a template with some information about this storyline. Um, so I, I think this can be done. We might lose some stuff in the process of doing it. Um, and by the way, the ultimate goal is not to do it for Pearls Before Swine, which is a mediocre uh, comic strip at best. But really, ultimately, do it for the Peanuts comic strip, uh, which lasted for over 50 years, and which has the kind of nice property that it is it is done with. Um, so as you can see, this is all that's that's here. All the rest of the crap that you see in the page comes from the fact that because it's a storyline, um, it gets additional. Da There's a template for storyline, which I guess we could look at. Um, that, that it does all the rest of the work for us. And that's what I need to somehow replicate here. Um, yep. And we will just sort of whistle a merry tune while this happens. Um, I am making an effort to download this wiki uh, locally so I can sort of look at how the HTML looks, but I might want to change that quite a bit. The only really nice thing that um, that this does, and like WordPress does, is it has different versions, you know, for mobile readers. Why does this have little things on? Oh. Um, okay. Let's take, that should have just been an example, but let's take a look at this storyline template. It works, so it's kind of weird that it's doing this. Um, yeah. I, okay, what? I could have sworn there was a no wiki. Yeah, there is not a no wiki in here somewhere. Um, somehow this this magically works. I don't really fully understand it. Um, in any case, uh, that is the I think that's the stream for today. Um, I do think this is an interesting project in multiple ways. One is the fact that you can create a whole wiki out of one page, regardless of how the wiki is is actually. Um, presented as a wiki 
on the other side. But the other more exciting thing is it might be possible to just create the whole wiki as HTML and then host it somewhere um, like GitHub Pages where uh, you get free hosting if provided your pages have no server side component to them. Uh, an extreme sort of nice thing would be to create a JavaScript interface to this um, where you're basically just calling a server for the triples, but you build up everything about the triples in JavaScript itself. Um, so you're basically building up all the design and stuff on the JavaScript side, uh, client side JavaScript. The only thing that's on the server side is the actual raw data. Um, and that, that might be something to do also. Um, that seems like it's harder, but it may not be actually because um, you know, when you ask for a page, if you have all the semantic triples, which is pretty much what this whole thing is, um, you might be able to build up the whole page that way. In any case, thank you for watching the stream, and goodbye for now.